Don't forget to check out howl.gg. Make sure to claim your free 50 cents when you use my code CROW and your free daily case to win up to $2,000 every day. They have many games such as Jackpot, Coin Flip, and The Wheel. Their shop has every skin available to withdraw, and for a limited time, you can get a 40% bonus when depositing with crypto or gift cards. So click my link in the description, and remember, 18s and above only. First, we we'll look at the upkeep of the externals. This design only needs two, and both have the same low upkeep. Of course, they are disconnectable, which I'll demonstrate in the tutorial. The compact gatehouses offer great angles in and out of the compound. The two single doors create an airlock too. And there's a turret protecting your furnaces up top. On one side of the base, you'll find a respawn point, complete with a ladder hatch leading straight up to the shooting floor. Around here, you can see the opposite gatehouse into the compound. Enter the main part of the base by going through this door and jumping up to the second floor. Here, we have a plethora of storage with boxes, lockers and furnaces built into the walls. And down here we have the main bunker. To open it, simply remove the twig wall frame. To reseal, replace the wall frame from this angle. A lot of you probably haven't seen this particular mechanic before, which was dreamt up by Aliator. Check out his video in the description. Here is the main TC upkeep, which can hold over 4 days of materials. Perfect for a solo, which this base is primarily designed for, but there's plenty of space in the starter for a duo if you feel lonely. In the jump up to the third floor, there's a peak to take back your shooting floor. And up here we have some box storage, and a bedroom with a battery concealed behind the locker. This has to be the best solo shooting floor I've made so far with a mixture of wide gap and free-handed peaks, ensuring there are no blind spots around the edges of your base. Here's the ladder hatch again, leading back down to the bedroom and compound. Defend your roof by jumping up through the single door, which doubles up as a peak. This tower makes a great respawn point, with door peaks into the compound. Use the garage door to exit onto the roof, there are two turrets protecting the top of your base, with an identical tower on the opposite side. You can also use the roof to defend, using these half-height window peaks. There's even space for a windmill and a SAM up here, and two vending machine bunkers to make offlines all the more expensive. These can be opened with a triangle roof from either side. Raiders must destroy the HQM wall to access the loot, as destroying the floor or the vending machine will despawn whatever's inside. Finally, here's the full build cost and upkeep, my cheapest solo duo base yet, and if you're going to go ahead and build the base, why not subscribe and get me to 20k before Christmas. The starter of this base will be three triangles, I know it's pretty small, but it needs to be that way because of the bunker mechanism. So we need to build the bunker as soon as possible, which isn't necessarily a negative. Place down the TC in this corner, making sure to align it correctly so you can fit a furnace in here too. In this tiny starter, you should be able to fit a couple of small boxes and a couple of bags to get you going. You can protect the TC more with a wooden door frame for now and upgrade it to a window later. And always remember to lock your TC so raiders can't grief your base. You have to be careful early wipe as there's no airlock. Now we're going to build the bunker. Before we do that, we need to build these parts here. It's extremely important to build these parts first to make the bunker easier to build. I'll also show a top-down view of this later. To start the bunker, build a twig triangle here, and put a square in front of it. To the left or the right, build up by 9 triangles. It doesn't matter if some foundations are raised. To the right of the last triangle, put a square, and then delete the entire build up. Now from this square, build back towards the base with 4 squares. The placement of this triangle is extremely important. To place it correctly, look left and make sure that this patch of stone is on the left too. If you're unsure what I'm talking about, upgrade the triangle to stone and make sure that it has these two lines pointing towards the base. When you're happy with that, delete the entire build up apart from one square. Then build it out again by another nine triangles, placing a square on the end. Again, remove the entire build up, leaving the last square. Then build back towards the base again with four squares. 
Look down to make sure the final square attaches to the one that you're standing on and not the triangle in front of you. Then build two half walls here and place a triangle on top from this angle. Now you can remove the entire twig buildup. To get onto the roof, place a triangle foundation and then a twig roof on top. From the top of the base, check the alignment of this triangle to make sure that it is attached to the two half walls below. Then place a triangle to the left of it with the lines pointing this way to make sure they attach together. Check to see if a triangle is placeable here. If it's not, then you'll have to redo these steps again. Extend the new entrance with a full wall, a half wall and a window on the right hand side. This will form the shooting floor peak and then jump up to the third floor later. Now this part is very important. Make sure that you're standing on this foundation here with the two half walls, as the wall frame that holds up the bunker must be placed from this angle, and obviously never upgrade it past twig. Don't place the wall frame from the angle shown in the left hand picture, otherwise you won't have the stability to place the triangle seal. Placing it from the angle shown, make sure it attaches to the offsetted foundation. When you're happy that the mechanism is working correctly, upgrade the starter like so. And place shelves here to put boxes on. If you haven't got a garage door yet, use a single furnace as a jump up. And here you can see how the bunker mirror is built one more time. Again, as mentioned before the video, if you don't like this kind of bunker, then feel free to build the other type, which is linked in the description. Ultimately, I chose to use this new type of bunker, as when it's finished, it's much stronger than the old type, cheaper to build, and has a much bigger core. Next, we're going to build honeycomb all around the side of the base. Make sure to upgrade the foundation and the wall behind the TC before sealing it in. Place the final walls from on top of the base. Now this next part is also extremely important. Make sure that these triangles are not aligned like so, otherwise you could seal the bunker forever. Instead, placing from an angle so make sure they attach to the outer walls of the honeycomb. Next we need to expand the footprint on the left hand and right hand side of the entrance. On this side we're going to build the bedroom. The bedroom must go on this side for optimal raid cost. To place the bed in here the garage door needs to be backwards and you can leave the roof open for now. Now on the opposite side we're going to build the entrance to the base. If you don't have a garage door yet, again, use a furnace as a jump up. Next round this floor with walls, but there's a technique to doing it, so watch carefully. You must place a half wall here and a triangle attaching to it. This will eliminate the triangle splash bug, so we can use the loot room as honeycomb. More information in the description. Do the same on this part, but put a twig frame here, and don't upgrade it yet, as we're going to put furnaces here. If you upgrade it now, you won't be able to place the furnaces. And do the same on this slip room with a half wall and a triangle connecting to it. And you can delete the half wall and replace it with a full wall. When you're happy with that, seal in the roof. Now we can finish the third floor by placing a wall, a single doorway, and three more walls, making sure this one's metal for the battery. 
place a half wall here, then seal in the roof. Now go back downstairs and complete the second floor. Put a wall here and another shelf for more boxes. If you like, lock the boxes inside the lip room to make the rate cost higher. I also recommend putting a workbench in front of the locker. These furnaces can be tricky to place, so just be patient and try again if you can't place the last one. Then seal each loop room with a window frame and window. Then spam as many wall frames and garage doors as you like. This one must be placed from this angle. For the third floor, place a battery in the corner, seal with the window and put the locker in front. Place the wall frame and the garage door backwards and carefully place the bed so it doesn't poke through the door. And then build shelves here for more boxes. You can put an extra box on the bottom if you don't mind the mobility. And here place your triangle ladder hatch. If you don't have the BP yet, just seal it with wood. We need to use a ladder here to reach the ladder hatch. Again, place the bed so it doesn't peek through the door. Now to build the externals. On this part of the honeycomb, place a twig triangle, two squares, and another triangle. Remove the build out and then build back towards the base with a series of triangles like so. Now upgrade the last three to metal. Delete these two twig triangles, put a square, and then two more triangles, upgrading the left one to stone and the right one to metal. From the metal triangle, build a square, a triangle, and two more squares. Then the external TC housing. You must place two half walls here for the disconnecting mechanism to work. Place a garage door to make sure the TC is at least seven rockets. You can add another door if you prefer. Then on the metal triangle, build a single door. Connect it to the external with a square frame triangle to the left and then two more squares. Now remove all the twig foundations. If your main TC gets destroyed in a raid and you need to replace it, you need to disconnect both your externals by placing a foundation and a roof like so. This changes the stability of the frames, collapsing it. Once you've replaced your main TC, replace the frames. Let's complete the gatehouse with a single door here and windows. Make sure both single doors open inwards to create an airlock. Then build half walls and roofs on top for the turret housing and ceiling. Permanently connect the gatehouse to the wide gap foundations with two wall frames. When you're happy with that, build the other external on the opposite side of the base in exactly the same way. You can see it again here in this animation. Now to build the freehand part of the shooting floor. To do this, place a twig triangle, a square, and then two low walls. For the next part, make sure you have the square foundation selected. Take out a gun and point it directly here at this triangle. Next, move the low walls, making sure not to move your mouse at all. Tap the S key on your keyboard to move back very slightly and place the square foundation. Now remove these two foundations and build three triangles to the left of the square. Then remove the build up, place a square, a triangle, and another square with two wall frames. As long as the wall frames have over 70% stability, they are connected to the main base. Again, repeat this step on the opposite side of the base, which can be seen in this animation now. If you still can't quite get it right, make sure to watch GameLikes' video in the description, who explains it probably a bit better than I can.
Now I'll show you how to place the compound walls. Obviously this might change slightly depending on the terrain that you're building on. For the ones next to the gatehouse, make sure you're lined up straight against the front. Then just fill in the gaps in the sides. Place twig triangles around the gatehouses to be able to place the barricades. Make sure to place electrical items on the sockets to make sure people can't build in. For the shooting floor, expand the wide gap footprint like so, building around by three triangles and raising the last one. If you can't raise the last triangle because of the terrain, use a half wall. Connect all the foundations together with frames, putting two on the front three triangles and one on the raised triangle. Then do this again on the opposite side of the base. For the freehand, just extend it by one more floor. Now to complete the shooting floor, attach triangles all around the outside of the base. And put windows here with horizontal embrasures. For the tower, place three floors, a half wall in the middle, door frames either side, and two more half walls in the centre. Three floors again on top, a window in the middle, and half walls on either side. Then build the roofs and seal it in. Next, repeat this step on the opposite side of the base. freehand peaks, attach a triangle to the wall frame and then place windows. Next extend these half height windows up to the roof. and place wall frames in these locations to separate the shooting floor. And don't forget a wall frame here, which should be upgraded to metal as it helps support the vending machine bunker. And add more wall frames here and seal in the roof. The roof design is very simple. For the freehand peaks, just place a square roof on each part. Place triangle roofs on the half height windows. For the vending machine bunker, upgrade one of the triangle floors and place a armored wall. Jump up onto the triangle roof to place the vending machine. Then do the same for the opposite side. Now to place the wind turbine, 
make sure it doesn't get in the way of the SAM site on the military base. Otherwise, the SAM site rockets will just hit the windmill. This will be dependent on the map that you're playing on. On the opposite side, build the SAM site. You can place two temporary floors here, place the SAM site very carefully, and then remove the floors. But make sure the SAM site is centered correctly, otherwise you'll break it. And the base is done. So if you liked it, remember to leave a comment and subscribe. And if you didn't, then maybe watch one of these other two videos of mine. Maybe you'll find something else you like. Cheers.